Yeah, I mean, Prince Andrew is definitely an example of what not to do <laughs> in an interview. Congratulations on this show. I wanted to speak to you first, Ruth. Um, my job is to get you to reveal something. Um, your job is to protect yourself. Mm. Did this role give you any more insight into maybe more open or being more careful on camera? I think as a, someone being interviewed, you are always dancing around. You're avoiding subject matters. You know that a journalist wants to get at something. You have an inkling. They, you can start sensing it and smelling it when they start to bring things up and you are trying to avoid it or shut it down straight away. I still haven't learned my technique of how to do that properly, but it's really fascinating from being inside Emily's shoes and seeing how strategic she was with that interview. It was a masterclass, you know, making someone feel comfortable and at ease enough to reveal themselves. And then not dropping the ball, holding the tension, keeping their gaze, you know, making them feel that they have to answer, even if they're uncomfortable doing so. And I think there was something from Andrew's point of view that he just didn't want to look like a bad person in that interview. So there could have been a danger of him getting up and walking out, but he didn't. He stayed there and answered, answered all the questions and got himself in hotter water by doing so. So there's, I, I learned from that, we'll just say no or get up and walk out. That's not, that's <laughs> not the lesson we want you to take away. I also wanted to speak about what's at the heart of this because your movie, uh, your series allows us to revisit the core of what is wrong. Um, and it kind of brings up the fact that the focus is on uh, the men. And it's really a, a story about sex trafficking and what happens to women. And I was wondering if sometimes the story gets lost in the reaction. How, as a journalist, do we bring that focus back? Yeah, that was really important to us in the telling of the drama. And it was one of the first things that we talked about, Jeremy Brock, the writer, and I. And we said, look, this can't be a sort of, a, you know, about a comedy villain. We don't even know, we don't know Andrew's guilt or innocence, but we have to look at it in terms of the, the whole picture. You know, the, the victims of Epstein, and, and also the other women in Andrew's life, the people that might be, you know, it's a terrible phrase, but the, the sort of the collateral, if you like, that the, the, the people who love him, the daughters, the ex-wife, you know, was there a moment in Andrew's thinking where he, he did that? He did the interview for his daughters. He thought it would help. You know, he wanted to clear up their lives in some way. And so we've tried to put it back into the context and ask the questions of what really changed. What changed for the victims? What changed for those around Andrew? What changed for Andrew himself? And I think you do feel that. You feel the sort of the, the power and the presence of the women right the way through, whether it's Amanda Thirsk, whether it's the Newsnight team, whether it's the daughters as well. They are at the heart of this drama. And I think, you know, that's not an accident. I think also what the drama says, like you say, it's drawing attention to the fact that this also, was it a question of this became a bigger news story? You know, Emily or the journalist and Prince Andrew became the news story rather than what was at the heart of it. And we do draw attention to that. That's kind of what the point of the drama mm. is. It's mm. asking those questions. It's like, did it get lost? Did the mm. story of those victims get lost in the muddy, in the sort of in entertainment, the in the yeah. memes and the, you know, in the entertainment of what this was and the Pizza Express and the sweating, you know, did it all get lost? Mm. And so that is what we question and we draw attention to in the drama. I give him credit in a way for putting himself in that, posi in that position. Not many people in positions of power these days are interviewed in that scale for a whole hour and, you know, by a very serious journalist. I mean, most people in power would not do that. So I have to give the guy credit for putting himself in that scenario, but he wasn't prepared. He didn't know. He didn't understand the audience by which who he's talking to. And I think there's something really fascinating in that that the interview revealed. It revealed to all of us, public, people watching, the nation, this man was completely out of touch with really his public. Thank you both so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.